Hi everyone, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here with video number two in our new series. If you like the videos, then please go to www.hclchessclub.com. Look at our new website of our uh, chess center and please donate. Okay, so this game was played in the last round of the U.S. Open in 1993, which coincidentally was at the same site as the World Open. And in fact, in my database, it even says World Open because it was played in Philadelphia in 1993. So I guess they assumed it was at the World Open. And actually, it was the same hotel, the Adams Mark, which is now a target. Okay, so I'm black against Mikhail Zlotnikov, who's international master. And um, pretty good pairing considering I had six and a half out of eight. And I was tied for second at the time. And the other players were six and a half out of eight, with the exception of me and Zlotnikov were grandmasters. We were the only two IMs, I believe. Uh, but since my USCF rating was pretty high, I, I got very lucky and got pared down, especially with the black pieces. Okay, so we played a rather state opening. It was a raidy where nothing much happened. We slowly developed our pieces. Again, I have the black pieces. And, yeah, I play like this with black, just solid and steady. And um, a lot of times when people play the raidy, instead of playing this pawn structure with white, they prefer to play g3 and bishop g2. In fact, I had that pawn structure against Atulia Shetty a few months ago, and I lost. Okay, the bishop's a little more passive on e2. White isn't really trying for advantage. He's just, quote-unquote, playing chess. Okay, rook e8. Um, I guess the main idea for black here is to push him to center e5, e4. So I played rook e8. And finally, I played e5. Okay, so it's move 10, and nothing's been traded. Nothing much is happening. And over the next 15 moves, lots and lots of stuff happens. And when I'm doing live commentary at the U.S. Championship or U.S. Women's, U.S. Junior, Sinkfield Cup, I often say that when the game starts out not too exciting, it gets very exciting later. Conversely, sometimes when people are sacking everything in the opening, it's preparation and at least it's some perpetual and sort of a quick draw. So sometimes you don't know what you're going to get when you're looking at a position. It might look not very interesting and then... Well, it's chess, so it changes very quickly. Okay, my opponent decided to block things up. He didn't want to play e4 right away because then his knight on d2 isn't very good. So he traded on d5 first and then played e4. And his idea is if I play d4, which, which is a fine move, then his knight has the c4 square. Okay, and if his pawn was on c4 and my pawn was on c6, then that wouldn't be the case. Okay, so I tried to maintain my center. I played knight b6, defending my pawn some more. And he played h3, kicking my bishop. I know a lot of people like to trade bishop for knight, especially a lot of lower-rated players like to trade. You guys know my philosophy, never trade. Bishop h5. And he played the move rook e1. Looks like he's evacuating the f1 square. He could play bishop f1, he could play knight f1. Okay, it's a reasonable move. Um, well, I advanced to the center. I wasn't really sure what to do now. I don't want to advance on the king's side. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So I advanced on the queen's side. I figure if I could play the move a4, my rook on a8 would get active, and maybe I could even get to a2 later. And I gained some space. He was ready for a4. He played the move a3. And if I play the move a4, he'll play b4, and then my rook on a8 isn't very active. Okay, but a3 is a bit of a weakness, so I played the move queen e7, putting my queen and bishop battery on his a-pawn. And actually, here he made the losing move. This position is about equal. Uh, one interesting move, um, which he didn't try, um, was to play the move d4, actually. And now it was boring, but it's not anymore. And the computer says this is about equal. Um, and I think if you're going to do something about your a-pawn, it's probably not this. Now here, my opponent played for tricks, but as all my students know, tricks are for kids. He played the very strange-looking move, knight to b1, which defends the a-pawn. And the purpose of this move is to make it look like he's blundering a pawn. Okay, And I fell for it. I took the bait. His knight on d2 was defending his e4 pawn, so I took the e4 pawn. Takes, takes, knight takes e4. Yummy, yummy, a free pawn. Okay, now when my opponent played knight b1, obviously he saw this. So pause the video um, right now and tell me... What move did he have in mind that he thought would win material? What was his plan? Okay, what he has is a double attack here. He has his rook on e1, and he could unleash on the knight by moving the bishop anywhere. And so he moved the bishop where it attacked something, bishop b5. And he's attacking my rook, and he's attacking my knight. 
So he thought that I couldn't take this point on E4. Unfortunately for him, uh, I get so much attack and so much pressure and so many pawns for the exchange, it's actually losing for him. Okay, so pause the video again and try to find the best move here for black. Okay, hopefully you found the move knight g5. Now, white's position is so bad that instead of taking my rook, the computer suggests retreating with bishop e2 to defend his king side. Obviously, white's not sacrificing a pawn so he can play bishop e2. And the only move that makes any sense with the reason he played bishop b5 is to take my rook. Unfortunately, his king doesn't have any defense now. I take with the bishop on f3. Taking with the knight is also good. Taking with the bishop just happens to be better. And this is actually also funny. I haven't looked at this game in a long time. It was played 24 years ago. And the engine says that he should play queen d2 here. Um, if you're playing somebody and they play queen d2, you may be suspicious they're using an engine. Okay. And after queen d2, black is still winning, but less winning than in the game. Okay, he took my bishop. Knight takes h3 check. Well, he has four moves with his king, but neither, none of them are any good. He plays king to g2. I have knight f4 check. If his king goes to the h file, then queen h4 is even stronger with all kinds of discovered checks and winning the queen and mate. So he played king f1. And I could just take the bishop on e8, and I would have a big advantage. But in fact, I found a more incisive way to win. You'll notice white's position doesn't make a lot of sense. Doubled isolated pawns. Nobody near the king. The knight's back on b1 for some reason. The bishop on e8 is hanging. And instead of taking the bishop, I play queen h4 threatening mate. And now I'm threatening queen takes f2 mate. Or I, if, I guess if the queen had too much to drink, it would go to f3. Okay, queen takes f2 mate. And the problem is he has a lot of ways to defend the mate. But in all cases, I'll play knight f4, which gets rid of the escape square, followed by queen h1 mate. So the only way to get an escape for the king is to play the move he played, the best move, rook e2. And the idea is, not only is he stopping mate, but he's vacating the e1 square for his king. So now, when I play knight f4, threatening queen h1 mate, he can run away, like and try to run away. Okay, you can run, but you can't hide. And he played king e1. Okay, now I want you to pause the video again, because this was my favorite move of the game. Um... Again, I like to lecture on Paul Morphy. That'll give you a little bit of a hint, getting all of your pieces active. And in this position, you want to play queen h1 mate. Of course, the white king could escape to d2. So it would be nice if you could control the d2 square, hint. And it would be nice if you could get all your pieces involved in the attack. Pause the video and try to find the best move. Okay, hopefully you found rook to d8. Now I'm threatening bishop b4 check and then followed by queen h1 mate. And I'm also defending my bishop on d6 in case he wants to take it. So now he has two pieces hanging, and his king is in a mating net with queen h1, bishop b4. In fact, that, actually bishop anywhere, b4 is just check. But if my bishop goes anywhere, my rook is defending d2. Okay, so there's not really a good defense here. He played knight c3, which the computer says is best. So there you go. And, well, for those of you who have watched all my lectures, or most of them, or any of them, uh, here I followed one of my famous rules. I still had it 24 years ago. I just didn't know it. And that's always play. Can you find the move now? Bishop f8. Okay. Now I'm attacking his queen. I'm threatening queen d h1 mate. And I'm defending the back row. There's never any rook c8, queen d8, rook e8. Uh, my king's very safe. Well, bishop anywhere is good, but bishop f8 is actually the best. Notice my rook is defended. Well, it's very hard to stop queen h1 mate. It really is hard. And he played the best move again, queen takes d8. And most of you would play queen takes queen without thinking. That's the problem. You should think in chess. Okay. And queen takes queen gives black a winning advantage. But I actually played a stronger move. I played knight g2 check. The reasoning being if king f1, I have the move queen h1 mate. So after knight g2, he has to move his king to the d file. And then I take his queen with check. So knight g2 check was more incisive. King to d2, queen takes d8 check, and finally, after the bishop being on e8 um, for a very long time, uh, since move 19, this is move 26, I'm finally going to take his bishop, and you'll notice when I do that, I'm going to have a queen and a knight and two pawns for two rooks, and that's way too much material. Plus his pawn structure is not good, his king is exposed. Computer engine gives black about a plus 7 advantage, and here my opponent resigned. That was the last round of the U.S. Open in 1993. 
that enabled me to get seven and a half out of nine and tie for second place, which was much better than I did in the World Open that year at the same site. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Going back in time with Ben, uh, please visit our uh, webpage of our chess center, the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta. The webpage is www.atlchessclub.com. Uh, please like our page, subscribe, and please donate. See you guys later. Bye.